In the last video, we saw the basics of calling procedures or functions in x86. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can pass data through the stack into functions. The main reason why we would want to pass data through the stack is because the registers are really precious resources for us. We don't always have the luxury of being able to overwrite registers to pass them into a function. In some cases, that data may need to be placed on the stack either because it's too big to be placed in registers or because we don't have any registers available to store that data. Now to do this type of thing, it requires a little bit of intricacy, but you'll see that it's actually not too complicated. A lot of the time people think that the functions are a bit complicated and there's a lot going on, but you'll see that when we break it down nice and simple, it's not so bad. So the first thing that I wanna say is we're gonna push the parameters onto the stack, okay? So we wanted to put four and one into this function and add those values together to get five. So I'm gonna go ahead and push those onto the stack. So I'm gonna push four, and I'm gonna push one onto the stack. Now let's think about what the stack looks like, okay? So we start off here, okay? The very first thing we do is we push four onto the stack. The second thing that we do in this program is we push one onto the stack. When we call this function, we saw in the last video that what this does is it places the return address onto the stack, right? That return address is the location of this right here. This is where we're returning to. Now the question is when we get into this function, right? How do we get these two values, the value one and the value four? Well, what we need to do is we need to think about where the stack pointer currently is. The stack pointer is right here, pointing at our return address. Now there's a few different ways that we can approach this. One of the classic ways that you're going to see this approached is a little bit weird. It's gonna seem a little bit unintuitive, but we'll walk through this idea. What we do is we do this. We say push EBP, and then we move into EBP the value of ESP. So what this is doing is it's setting up what we call a base pointer. So we push EBP onto the stack. So our stack now looks like this. And generally what happened was our stack pointer actually moves up, right? So now it's pointing at EBP. Now, why would we do something like this? The EBP that's on the stack here essentially acts as the base of what we call our stack frame. The idea is that if we called multiple functions inside of functions, so if I called another function inside of here, we would need to have some sort of way of distinguishing between everything that's associated with their first function and everything that's associated with their second function. And the way that we typically do that is we say this EBP is like the divider. So everything above this EBP is something else. Everything below it is a part of our function. That's, that's sort of the visual of what we've got with this EBP register. Now we move EBP into ES, or ESP into EBP just to make sure that both of these registers are pointing to the same location. What we're gonna do is we're gonna reference things relative to EBP. So you could think of each of these with address offsets. So this return address is four address away from the EBP. So it's four away from the EBP. This next one is eight away from the EBP. And the next one after that is 12. And the reason being is just because of the way that memory slots work. So this one is EBP, and then this one is four away, this one is eight away, and this one is 12 away. So they just increment by four for each memory slot. So in order to access these variables, what we have to do is we have to access, you know, plus eight and plus 12 of the base pointer. So let me show you what that looks like. So what we do is we say, I'm gonna move into EAX, the value EBP plus eight. So I add eight to it to get to the address where that argument actually is. And then here I move into EBX, EBP plus 12. So now we have these values inside of the registers and now we can add them together. Now, what do we have to do before we return? This is an important part of this. Right now the stack pointer points to EBP, which is a problem because when we return, it's gonna to return to what the stack pointer is pointing at as we learned in the last video. So we actually have to remove this from the stack and get the stack pointer back here. Now, luckily enough, this is a pretty easy operation. We simply pop the value off into EBP and then we return. 
and that's the end. So we have now the value that we wanted inside of EAX and we are good to go. Now, let me show you what this actually looks like because it's important to understand a bit about how this is actually looking. And I also wanna to prove to you that, you know, what I'm saying is happening is actually happening. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble and compile and we will GDB and do our layout as ASM. Now let's take a look at what's going on. So I'm going to go into my program and you see that we push these values onto the stack and then we call this and then we push EBP onto the stack and then we move the ESP into EBP, okay? So we've done all of that. Our stack is now all set up. Let's take a look at what we've got. If I took a look at my ESP register, it's pointing to this location here. Now, as I said before, I can do this X over X and I could point it towards this memory address and it will tell me what's at it. And I get this answer here. This would be our base pointer if my diagram is to be believed. So one question is, what about you know the things that are beyond this? Well, what we can do is we could say X over and specify how many memory registers I wanna get back. So if I wanna get back you know, four, I could do four X. That would be four different memory slots to look at. If I do that, what we'll see is a little bit more context. Do you see that we have this, which I'm saying is my EBP, the 0F, um, sorry, 0XF7FF. And then we have the return address, which would make a lot of sense, right? Because we would expect that to be in this position. And we could come down here, we can verify, you know, 8049186. Yep, that is our return address. We can see that pretty clearly here. And then we have our arguments one and four. So we can see that those are also on the stack. Now notice that these are exactly where I said they would be. So this is the EBP, the very first one. Four away from it is the return address. Eight away is one and 12 away is four. Let's see if that actually worked. So if I step in, if I do info register EAX as the value one, step again, info register EBX, the value four. We'll step in again, we'll do an info register EAX, get the value five. And when I pop this off and I return, you see I actually do go back to my return address and the application can finish without any sorts of problems. And like I said last time, we can actually just verify that everything runs successfully just by running and echoing out that return value. So with this, you now have a better understanding of how these functions work in terms of passing data along in the stack. Now there are still some other details that we probably should discuss when it comes to calling functions in x86, but for now this gives you probably enough to sort of think about and play around with and try to understand in a bit more detail. I encourage you to try this out on your own, try to replicate exactly what I did, try to draw out the stack like this. It's very helpful, but hopefully this gives you a bit more insight because I find that a lot of resources that talk about this are a bit harder to understand. So hopefully drawing it out like this and going step by step gives you a bit more of that insight towards how these functions generally work. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.